One man is dead tonight after he was shot by police who were executing a search warrant. All of it unfolding in Lawrence at a motel off Pendleton Pike. Thanks for inviting us in at 6 o'clock. No officers were hurt in today's shooting, but this investigation into what happened is just getting started. Our Samantha Johnson has been at the scene all day, so Sam, what's the latest? Well, Scott, I can tell you the last investigators left this scene just a couple hours ago, and since then we have seen several people, including motel staff, tending to the room where this all happened. This is the Park Terrace Motel, like you mentioned, just off Pendleton Pike, east of Post Road, and this is where IMPD tells us around 1030 this morning, IMPD SWAT officers were serving a warrant for a man who they say was armed and dangerous and known to have drugs. Once police made their way inside the room. They say there was a struggle and the man reached for a rifle. That's when two officers shot hitting and killing that man. No officers were hurt and tonight we're still waiting to learn the name of the man who died. But we talked to IMPD Chief Chris Bailey who called today's shooting disappointing saying this never should have happened. Nobody wants to be here today, but uh, as a society, we just have to be better to each other. Uh, we just we, we, we do or, or these things are not going to stop happening. Now we learned there was also a woman in that motel room this morning. We're told she complied and was taken in for questioning. We also know the body cameras on those SWAT officers. They were on and of course they will now be used in the several investigations that are already underway tonight. We can also tell you those two officers are on administrative leave. That is standard protocol for IMPD. Scott, as far as the man who died today, we do anticipate to learn more about him in the days to come. All right, Samantha Johnson reporting live for us in Lawrence. We'll have more for her on that story tonight at 11. Tonight, new court documents are revealing what led to a deadly shooting of restaurant owner George Nelson Sr. All of this happening Wednesday at 26th and MLK. Since then, police have arrested a man they believe is responsible. Tonight, our Marion County reporter Lauren Costick shares some new details from this investigation and the larger impact this loss is having on our community. To many, George Nelson Sr. was known for Pa and Ma's backyard barbecue. Therefore, everyone like very nice. You say chin up, chest out. But he was better known for the good he was doing in the community. You know, he's a real good guy. He's every bit of a, uh, 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 the kind of man you want to be. He just wanted to be somebody who was positive. Court documents released Friday say the deadly gunfire stemmed from an argument over money. Family saying the suspect was hired to fix siding on the restaurant. Nelson's wife told detectives the suspect came over to the business wanting the rest of the money, despite not having finished the job. The suspect then allegedly tore off the siding he already put up, leading to the disagreement. According to court documents, the two men who were with the suspect claim Nelson pointed a gun first before the suspect shot. Nothing else, man. We, we got to do better. We got to do better. Nelson's death now marks the third Indianapolis changemaker to be killed by gun violence in just the last year. Last September, Mike Chappelle, better known as Mike Trees, was killed in a triple shooting on the northwest side. He was part of the hip hop scene and guided young musicians through a radio show. And last July, Indy Ceasefire founder Ron G was also shot and killed at an east side gas station. Reverend Charles Harrison, leader of the Ten Point Coalition, says these losses speak to the level of sense violence increasing in the city. I'm not for sure how we stop this if we don't get our arms around this as a city and, and, and try to help people resolve these conflicts uh, without using violence to do so. As for the suspect in this case, he is still in jail tonight. The Marion County prosecutor will be determining final charges. In Indianapolis, Lauren Costick, 13 News. You can honor the life of Big George this weekend. There's a vigil with a balloon release at 3 o'clock Sunday afternoon at Pa and Ma's Barbecue. Now, if you do plan to go, you're asked to bring white, silver, and blue balloons. Richard Allen was back in court today for a status hearing in the Delphi murders case. He is the man accused of killing Abby Williams and Libby German. And the big discussion today, what will a jury be allowed to hear about the case at the trial? Our Emily Longnecker was in Delphi today with what happened at today's court hearing. Emily? Well, whatever happened today in that status hearing with Judge Francis Gall, the media and public were not privy to it. The scheduled 
public portion of today's hearing never happened. So whatever was decided or discussed happened behind closed doors. What we do know is that both sides filed new motions. The prosecution filed two motions to try and prevent the defense from deposing a handful of people, including former Carroll County Sheriff Tobe Lesenby, who was sheriff at the time of the murders. The state says the defense deposed Lesenby last year and doesn't need to do it again. They also don't want the defense deposing the state's expert on Odinism and two other people the defense believes were involved with the murders instead of Allen. The defense believes the girls were murdered in a ritualistic sacrifice tied to the pagan religion Odinism that has ties to white supremacy. Judge Gall hasn't decided yet whether she'll allow the defense to tell a jury about that alternate theory or those alternate suspects. Until that happens, the state says deposing these other people isn't relevant to any issues in the case. The defense also filed two motions today connected to Richard Allen's psychologist who treated him while he's been held for more than a year at the Wabash Correctional Facility. Dr. Monica Walla testified earlier this month in pretrial hearings, admitting on the stand but that before Allen's arrest and treating him, she'd been fascinated with the Delphi case. Walla admitted to researching the case while at work on Department of Corrections computers. Now the defense wants to see any records about Walla's employment to see if this is a pattern. They also want to know if the DOC has investigated Walla since her testimony last month. They want these records within 15 days instead of waiting the standard 30 days for them. The defense says they need to look at those records on Walla to see if they want to include those exhibits at the trial. So some new motions today while we wait on Judge Francis Gall to make a decision on some of those earlier motions, including whether she will allow the jury to hear alternate murder theories and alternate suspects and also dozens of confessions. The prosecution says that Richard Allen made uh, during his time in prison behind bars a lot to decide before that trial that is still set to start October 14th in Carroll County. Emily Longnecker, 13 News. A sixth person was just arrested for the death of a Muncie teenager. 15-year-old Latajan Phillips was found shot outside of an apartment complex last week. And tonight, 21-year-old Atravian Nathan faces charges for conspiracy to commit robbery resulting in serious injury. Now, according to the court documents, Nathan told police he was with the five others arrested in this case and they were going to trade guns with someone else. Then he says he was told to stay back and then ran from the scene after hearing gunshots. Two of the other suspects in that case appeared in court today. 17-year-old Robert Graham III and 16-year-old Kayshawn English are now charged with murder. Tonight, they're in the Delaware County Jail without bond. Two other suspects, Daisha Eckford and Ricky Nathan, both face charges for conspiracy to commit robbery, resulting in serious injury. A 14-year-old was also arrested in connection to this case. Curbing youth gun violence in our city. That is what the Indy Public Safety Foundation is looking to do after this year's rise in shootings involving young Hoosiers. Tonight, our Anna Chalker shows us how this organization hopes to tackle this problem tomorrow. As you can see, set up for Saturday's Youth Anti-Gun Violence Day is already underway here at the Amber Woods Apartments. We've seen crews setting up tents and people passing out flyers to neighbors over here. And organizers tell us this is not just a large summer block party, but an opportunity to listen to kids in this Far East Side neighborhood on how gun violence impacts them every day. As we continue to try to target the youth, that more programs are stepping up, more organizations are being developed. That's why the Indy Public Safety Foundation is bringing together those programs for the anti-gun violence event. For the third year, the organization, along with State Senator Lakeisha Jackson, will walk and talk with Far East Side neighbors. They say this year's event is more important than ever. We've seen an increase of not only youth homicides, but the non-fatals as well. So we would just want to make sure that we're present in the community with resources for them. This whole event will start at 10 at the Boys and Girls Club off of 38th and Post, where they'll have a peace walk back here to the Amber Woods Apartments. On the Far East Side, Anna Chalker, 13 News.